At first glance, the Erd building might not look very historic, but underneath the layers of new storefronts, you can find one of the few structures in the city that was standing during the Dakota conflict. Like many others, Frank Erd and his wife came to New Ulm from Cincinnati. Frank, whose father was an architect, decided to put up a substantial store, one of only three brick buildings in downtown in 1862. Its solidity made it attractive to the Brown County supervisors who chose Erd's store for their official offices. It was a good business move as well, since it guaranteed a steady stream of customers as citizens came to file land titles, pay taxes, and hold court sessions. The building's solidity was also the reason that the Erd building became a haven during the Dakota conflict. Looking for protection, women and children gathered within its walls, and windows were boarded up and covered with feather mattresses while a battle raged outside. Inside, ten-year-old Katie Groper looked out as the men, including her father, set up a defensive line while the women tried to calm frightened children. She said, many years later. They began to barricade the houses in the center of the city. One of the first in the city to be killed was a school friend of mine, Emily Polly, who had disobeyed and walked out into the street. I saw her the next day. She lay in a coffin, still dressed in her blue cotton dress. Soon they began to bring in the first wounded people. Never shall I forget the dreadful sight. The groans of the wounded still ring in my ears. In the dark, close quarters of the basement of the Erd building, a tension hung over the room. The city fell into an uneasy interlude as they awaited another battle. In the center of the room in the basement, they placed a keg of gunpowder, and all had the understanding that if the barricades were breached, someone would light the fuse. The responsibility was given to Mary Schmitz Ryan, a young woman, six months pregnant, who only days before had fled her family's farm clutching her two-year-old daughter. But the barricade lines held. Albert Alwyn remembered. That night, the heavens were red, and it seemed as though we couldn't hold out much longer. But as darkness fell that night, the sounds of gunfire faded, and then fell silent, and by the next day the Dakota were gone. Two days later, the town was evacuated as survivors marched to Mankato in safety. Over the years, taste and time brought many changes to the Erd building. After the Civil War, the Erds added a third floor. When Willibald Eibner bought the business in 1883, he turned the building into one of the finest restaurants in southern Minnesota complete with a bakery and candy-making factory. Following a downtown fire in 1936, Eibner rebuilt the front in a striking art modern style. And then in the 1980s, the street facade was changed to look like an old German beer hall. The sounds of battle may be gone now, and the building changed, but the memory lingers of the events of that one week in 1862.